So today's video is going to be about digital mixers and specifically the digital mixers that are built into your new very smart speakers such as the V4400 series from Harbinger. Now there's JBLs, there's Mac, there's all types, there's Electro Voices, the list goes on and on and on about which speakers have this type of technology in them. There's Alto as well. As long as it has a built-in EQ, more than just like a spectrum of three, we're talking a full band spectrum. And I'm gonna show you right now on the app. On the app, this happens to be what the V4412 looks like. That's the speaker behind me on the app. Now, right now, we're gonna be talking about feedback suppression on these apps, how these apps can seriously take care of a lot of problems you have. And depending on how good the app is, how much better you can do with having less equipment with you to do a lot of great things. Now, in this case, this isn't specifically this particular one product alone, though you're gonna learn an awful lot about the app that belongs to Harbinger because that's the app we're gonna use in today's video. But again, if you have this, you can go look for it. It's an idea of something you can look at and see and do. Because a lot of people that have digital mixers have gotten to that point where they've now are they're controlling for feedback, they're using for all types of other features. Let's bring that up on the screen as well. Let's bring the whole mixer up. So we've got options to control all the gains for all the inputs on the back of the speaker. We also, if we go into the reverb option, we're now going to see that we have reverb control on the actual unit. We've got lower mids and time levels, all that kind of stuff. If we go to individual inputs, we're now gonna have chorus and reverb as an individual control option. But again, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the tuning of the speaker in reference to your microphone. So this way you can eliminate feedback. Now we're gonna have a part of it where we're gonna to wanna to take out and generally all together. If we look at different settings, and we do that by using two features at the bottom, one's called the load option, and the other one is called the save option. The save option allows me, any modifications I do on these apps, allows me to save it and bring it into the next time. I may have to tweak it depending on which spaces I go to. Now, again, if I hit the save option, I can cancel here, so this is okay. Brings up the screen, I can create my own user saved options. I can use some of the default ones that are in there. The current one that I have is Feedback S. That's the one I'm using right now that I'm gonna be showing you on today's video. Now, I'm gonna hit cancel because I don't need to redo it, but if you're going to a, a regular hall, Legion Hall, uh, a certain club or bar that you go to all the time, and you know it's one of these once a month I go play at this particular place. You can set it up, leave it, and save it, so this when you go there, you just pop it back in and it's done for you. You don't have to do it over again every single time. Now. Let's talk about how feedback is a problem. Well, feedback, I'm gonna use this. By the way, if you're looking for a pretty awesome microphone, these you gotta go down to Guitar Center for. The links will be down below, but these are Sterling microphones. And you can get them either as a hypercardioid microphone, which is what we're gonna use in today's video, or your regular style microphone, which is the P20 in here, but both of them are awesome. And I like them because of the price. They sound great. They sound like microphones that cost twice as much. Because if you know Stern theme, if you don't, look it up. I mean, it's pretty crazy stuff. But this is a very impressive thing. Now, I also have, to make my life easier, at the bottom, I have an X-Vibe plugged in. Now, this is the X-Vibe with the phantom power to run this microphone. Because remember, it's a hypercardioid. Why am I using a hypercardioid? Make it easier for this speaker to really not like me. So, would I use this normally? No, I might use it in the audience if I'm doing some Q and A's because you don't have to hold the microphone right up to you to talk. It's more like a TV mic in that style. So it's gonna work out really well for here today. So how do we do this? Okay, well, again, you're looking at that screen. Now I'm gonna bring up another screen and this is gonna be the app that you're gonna to wanna to download. And I'm gonna give you the link. This app will be down below. You can get this type of app. You may even have one. It's a metering app, full frequency, real time. You need to have this near you where you have your microphone. So this app and this microphone have to go in, in hand, sort of like that. And why? Because we're gonna be monitoring the app to see where our feedback problems are. Because without that, we're not gonna see where the feedback issues are. It's just not gonna happen. So here's the app. And if you look at it right now, you'll see that I've already done tests. I've got my high points already there on the app. And problematic, you're gonna have an irritation usually at around somewhere in the 4,000 to 5,000 range and then you'll have something else afterwards. So in my case, the afterwards popped up at 7,800 kilohertz. So let me show you how that works. We're gonna turn the other mics on so you can hear them in the back. 
I do have music playing in the background. That's licensed art list music that's playing there. So we're all good with that. And uh, let's cue it up a bit here. So everything again is on the app. I'm not using another mixer. There's nothing else. App, speakers, that's it. The second speaker is connected through their stereo link function. So everything this speaker does is going to automatically go to that speaker. It's as simple as that. Now, the app I have straight up on the top left-hand corner, a blue button, which I'm going to turn off. That turns the EQ that I have currently set. This particular setup here, which is my feedback setup, is now flat. It's in a standard mode. Nothing weird is going on. It's just like that. You'll notice there's numbers, by the way, across the screen. One, two, three, four, five, four is next to seven, that sort of thing. I've moved them around a bit. That is the bag. That's how you get rid of it. Now, let's, everything's on. You hear my voice coming through this mic here and those mics behind me, but let's turn this guy on here and see what happens. happens. There we go. Okay, everything's much, much louder. I'll hold this microphone a little bit away for you. Hold it down here so this way it's not too bad for you, but you can hear it. The feedback is just ready to go, ready to get in there. Now I always have to be ready on the volume in case it runs wild on me. But there you are. It's right there. It's hanging on. It wants to go. It wants to go. And it's going to be peaking at the same place all the time around that 7800. See how that 7800 on the actual chart keeps pushing up and it keeps getting in that way. So there you go. We're going to make it a little bit worse, a little bit worse. Oh, let's see. It's almost going to go there. Now I'm going to just hit that one button there and I'm going to turn what I've got on. Now you're going to notice my voice has changed a bit. Okay. It's, it's a little bit, a little bit more subdued in the upper range, which is fine. Then I like my voice that way a little bit. If I want, I can now come back to the chart that I have. Now, why is it all the way down here? Well, if we go back to the actual app itself and I'm going to tap on that screen, I'm going to put the mic down for a second so you can hear that properly. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pause the actual meters running on the screen here. So this way, there you go. So everything's kind of stopped right now. And I can now move my little green target around. It's going to show me exactly what's going on here. So if we see up here, and we're going to line up with the second one, it might be very hard for you to see, but that is lining up. That is lining up at around 78. Okay. So that's where it's popping there. If we get to the se second one, just to the left of it, that's popping at around 44, 43, 44 and a half, that sort of thing. So again, those are the ones you got to watch out for because in this particular room here, sitting right here, that's where my feedback problem is going to be. So you're going to set this up wherever you want to set it up. So you may have your speakers on a stage, far apart in front of you, do all that tweaking and adjusting based on where the microphones are going to be. And then you can repeat that same function depending on where you are. If you're using it even for something at home, a karaoke or in your garage or in your backyard or at a bar or at a hall or at a reception area, it doesn't matter. Same rules apply. So here we are. We're going to look back at the app and we're going to say, those are the two numbers we're interested in, the 44. So we're going to go look up at the top here and we're going to look at that right there where I box it up. And that's what we're going to, number four. Number four has got to be playing around in this area here. We got to see that 48 and we want to bend that down at 48.5 is what we're going to go for around there. 48.5, it's around there. And then we're going to have our, we need to keep that 78, which is, I'm going to put that in number seven, 78 right there. And we're going to try and find that. And we want to have that as our low point. Now, normally you do one at a time and you see how it goes, but I've done both of them because I've gotten comfortable with this. Usually I'm always, always poking at something around 4,000 to 4,500. And it seems to be an area people want to pull down anyways. So I tend to pull down on that spot to start off with. The number seven I have on my screen here, that's going to be more reference to where I am. So in this case, this particular space that I'm in here right now, that closer to 8,000 always seems to be problematic. Now you notice I've also done two other things on the mixer here as well. I brought up around 800. I give it the, I call it the sure bump, the SM58 bump right there. And then I also like to bump it up a little bit on the lower end. You don't have to. I mean, that's your choice. You do you, right? So now we've got that turned on. We're going to have a completely different sound. So let's unmute these mics behind me. And there you go. We're going to have a completely different sound. 
and it's not going to sound tuny at all. So here, let's get the meters going back again on the little screen. And what you'll notice is that if you're looking at the little screen, the screen itself is showing that on the higher end, so between the 4,000 and going up to around uh, 10,000, it's much more subdued. It's much more calmed down. It's not as active. It sounds good. It's not irritating. Uh, I'm not getting irritated by my own voice, which is a very good thing. And uh, we're not getting any, any signs of feedback in the system, which is exactly what we're going for. So again, that's because of the app. If I didn't have the app, I'd have to have a mixer, I'd have to do a whole bunch of things. That's it. That's how simple all of this can be. Now, the only thing that would be nice is if the app had this feature, what I'm running on my phone, as its own thing, or it's just flipping back and forth all the time, and that's okay. I, I'll start with something rather than nothing. The idea is to make it as easy as possible when you go out and gig. If you're a DJ, if you're in a live band, if you're a solo artist or duet, these are all things that are going to make your life a little better and make it so this way you bring less equipment with you. Because remember, this particular setup here, again, we're looking at the tuning. We have reverb controls. We have mixer built into it. We have input controls for both one and two. Level controls, of course, for channel three, which is a stereo channel, which is where my Bluetooth, my 3.5, and my quarter inch inputs are. So... If I have a keyboard mixer or something like that, I can plug that all into there as well. So all of that, and this controls all of it once you get it all plugged in. Very, very impressive. So remember, apps are much more important than just that extra little toy when you buy the speaker. You want to see what that app can do for you. You want to see how it fits in with your life and how you plan on using the speakers. I think what they're doing with this, amazing. We're definitely going to find little things that would be nice to add on. Sort of like how I just mentioned, I would like to see an actual full metering system built into the app. So this way, use the microphone on the app, sorry, use the microphone on the tablet or phone to allow me to monitor the room. So this way I can do this real time or maybe even incorporate the two a little bit better. Uh, I have noticed that some companies are starting to get, I'm not, not quoting anyone in Pacific, but there are companies that are starting to use technology that allows them to actively reset and monitor the space for feedback and then use an artificial intelligence program, you know, something built in to cancel it out. Those are be nice things in the next generation. But again, you got to figure it out. Then you got to figure out how to make it cost efficient. Those are two very important things. But for now, this app is definitely going to be a game changer. Again, not just for Harbinger, but for a lot of brands. I hope this video helped you out a bit in looking at more details in your speakers, how to get more out of the speakers or apps that you already have or you might be planning on getting. Well, if you're looking for anything we've talked about in this video, including the microphones, the speakers, you name it, it'll be down below for you. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Please hit the subscribe button and always hit that thumbs up. Ta-da! I say thank you very much. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.